Dear viewers, wherever you are, hello and welcome to this new episode of your program, Spectra. Immigration is a phenomenon that's increasing exponentially around the world for a plethora of reasons. Political turmoil, wars, civil strife, um, economic problems, recession and depression, and oppression of human beings due to political, religious, gender-related reasons, and so on and so forth. But when an immigrant takes the decision to emigrate, and emigrate with an I and an E to leave his country of origin to come to a new adoptive country, they usually do not take the decision for themselves only, because only a minority of immigrants do this alone. Most of them come with a family. And this family might have adults only, or might have adults and children too. And it's very common to have some form of dilemma or paradox, um, or a lot of controversy actually, between first and second generation immigrants. It is um, a very, very common um, you know, phenomenon that everyone would notice. Um, immigrants from of the first generation are emotionally connected to their culture, to their um, country of origin, while the second generation might not be that connected. And they also tend to compare between what the mainstream, what the layman, what the street says in their new adoptive country and what their parents say. And if there is any contradiction, this might create some kind of mental or emotional problems for the second generation. In this episode, we'll try to shed more light on this and see um, how can immigration affect the minds of second generation immigrants? How do they see things like love, like marriage, like work, like multiculturalism? Well, without further ado, to shed more light on this, I'm really delighted to be accompanied by Ladies first, of course, by Sarah Habanjar, who is of Lebanese origin, and by Karim Samah, who is of Egyptian origin, and both are Canadian citizens. Sarah and uh, Karim, hello and welcome to the program. Hello. Hi. Hello, and, it's very nice to be here. And it's a delight having both of you with me here, absolutely. and. Um, to start off, like I uh, introduce both of you as um, Canadians of Lebanese and Egyptian origins, respectively. Um, can you just shed a little bit more light on, like, when did you come to Canada or were you born in Canada? And if you still have connections with your countries of origin. So, ladies first again, Sara. Yeah, thank you. Um, I first came to Canada when I was 17, but like turning 18, so for uni. Um, I spent all my high school years, all my life in Lebanon. I was born there, but because my dad had the like Canadian passport and everything, he by birth, he gave it to me. Um, I kind of still do have some like connections because I still have like a majority of my family there. But I also come from a family who like, most of it has immigrated to somewhere, not Canada specifically. So I barely have anyone there, but like the people there, I do still talk to them. Okay, so you still have connections with your country of origin, and, but you said like immigration, you are not the very first people to do this. It's it's something that is sort of common in your like, you, um, you know, you're like, family, like your extended family, or like your, your surroundings. And uh, same question for you, Karim. Uh, so I was born here, but my parents were all born in Egypt. And they immigrated here around 2004. Uh, it was mostly due to the fact that they found better jobs here and more opportunities here. Uh, I still do have a connection with back home just because most of my family is in Egypt right now. And I do often visit like in the summer or in the winter break. Uh, so yeah, 
I was born here, but I still do have like a, a fairly good connection with my country of origin. Perfect. So both of you still, um, you know, like have the ability to have two different perspectives. You know, you're able to see it from one side and the other side. Uh, before we delve deeper into the crypts, really, of these differences, but on a scale from zero to 10, where zero is none, 10 is everything, how would you say that the culture of your origin is different than your new adoptive or Canadian culture? Sarah, please. Um, at first, because when I came, I didn't really know anyone here. I would say it was a fully 10, like it was a cultural, a cultural shock. Everything was so different. But like now with like making friends and everything, I prioritized making them more of Arabic origins just to like have some of that culture still around me. So now it's kind of like down to seven in a way, because I've had like some part of it here. Yeah. Okay, so do you still have some kind of homesickness? Oh, yeah, all the time. Okay. Like, I kind of, like, live my life waiting for summer just to go back to Lebanon. Okay, absolutely. And um, how about you, Karine? Like, you were born here in Canada. So, um, so... like a longing to go back to Egypt? Or, like, how, how does it feel for you? Uh, I mostly do just because uh, I have like a very good connection and attachment with my family and most of them are back home and I, I would not mind going back but you know I was I, I was raised here but it was kind of like a, a mix of everything so at home I was raised with Egyptian culture and I went when I went to school they would tell me something completely different so it, it, it was a mix of the two so you know i understand both cultures and i'd on i'd honestly give it like a six a six okay yeah so, so both of you see that there is a difference more or less there is a difference and it's a sort of a respectable difference it's, it's not a very minor one Okay, so, so start, like, first things first, like, uh, both of you have studied here in Canada, maybe in different stages. So, um, in terms of education, like, um, first of all, like, in um, your countries of origin, like, like many other parts of the world, uh, grade 12 is like a nightmare. <laughs> It's a very, very decisive year, and the whole family just works like a uh, Uh, you know, bees in a hive to serve the, you know, the queen bee who is the student in grade 12 and who must dedicate all of his, her time to studying because it's um, either you make it or you don't. And again, there are specific um, universities, specific faculties, specific majors that you're supposed to choose over others. Um, do you still think the same way today or do you think it doesn't really matter? Sarah, please. Okay, so as I said, grade 12 was in Lebanon. And at that point, I didn't make the decision to fully move here because it was like a really hard decision. But since that was like a backup plan, I had to like fully put the priority on my studying and being like an A student and everything just so I can have all the opportunities here. Like now that I'm here, I got into my like dream university and everything. It's like I still work hard, but it's kind of more laid back because I already got here. Like you, you got me. Yeah. Um, you know, like a follow up question to that again, Sarah, and and um, I of course like Kareem's input on that as well. Like, do you still see that there is like there are like more respectable majors than others, like? more reputable majors than others like are is there a job that you would um try to avoid or like if um you know like in in some cultures there are like something like for instance like a physician or an engineer these are the two big shots if you're not a physician or an engineer then uh, uh you know like try to be a pharmacist maybe or like 
but if you can't make it in any of these, then tough luck. Uh, do you still think this way? Uh, it, I used to think that way. I actually came to here and I started studying medicine because it was like medicine, law or engineering. But after I came here, I realized that first of all, I hate science, so it's not really for me. And then I realized that what I love is English. And then the English like major and the working world here is actually like really good. And there's many opportunities. It's just not given there because in the Arabic countries, like there's not really a focus on like reading and books. So I could get the view of why they wouldn't prioritize it. But like now fully, I can see that majors like art and English and business also have like, like a really high standard and they are like really important. Perfect. And um, say almost same question, uh, but I'll just tweak it a little bit for you, Kareem. Again, uh, vocational education, like would you ever consider like at any time, not now, but maybe in the future, like uh, studying things like plumbing or, um, you know, um, being a hairdresser or something like that? Or would you think that's that's sort of a low job or like that's not success? Uh, I think it very much depends in uh, which society, right? So plumbing back home in Egypt is seen as like no matter how much money you make, if you're a plumber, at the end of the day, you're still a plumber, right? That's that's the way they think over there. But I think it would be fine over here in Canada. Like there, there wouldn't be any judgments or anything. Uh, in Canada, they care mostly about how much you make and less of how you make it. You know what I mean? But back home, it's... Uh, it's more of a it's more of a status thing like it, it, the name matters and like your profession matters very much okay. so being an engineer doctor a uh, lawyer th those are those are the things that are very highly respected back home not not much else so i i think it depends if if it's uh if it's back home like i, I guess it wouldn't be considered that good but if it's here, like they make a lot of money, and I can't, you can't complain much about that. So, okay, that's my take. So, uh, like, if you're staying here, if you're, if you're like you're spending the rest of your life here, that would wouldn't matter really. So, um, you might consider something like that. Like, if if you have the talent for it, if you're if you have the passion for it, you would pursue such a career, right? Uh yeah, I I would most definitely. Uh, like there would the only thing that would hold me back is what my my family would say because I do care what my family would say at the end of the day. But if uh, there's no other option and that's what I'm good at, yeah, most definitely. Absolutely. And um, moving to the next point here is again, um, you know, multiculturalism because. Um, you know, in in many countries around the world, there is, um, you know, like a dominant culture, religion and whatnot. Um, maybe in Lebanon, it might be a little bit different because there is, you know, like um, even like in terms of the people and the government as well, there is sort of, uh, you know, like spaces for different like religion, sects, backgrounds and whatnot. But again, it can never be as multicultural as Canada. So uh, it like there is a limited spectrum in it's there is a spectrum in in Lebanon, but in Canada there are spectra actually, you know, uh, many 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 big varieties. In in Egypt there is as well, but maybe I would say less than Lebanon. And again, in both cases they are not as wide as Canada. Um, how much did this affect you when you came here to Canada, which is um, basically a very a diverse country? It's a cultural mosaic, and uh, you have people from all different walks of life, from four corners of the globe, with all kinds of thought. And since it's a democracy as well, people are free to express their feelings. And, like, how did this affect you? 
Um, so back home, as you said, there was like a religious diversity, but like when it came to people, everyone was still Lebanese. So it's not that severe. But when I came here, it was all religions, all cultures, like literally everything. And I kind of found it more freeing because when someone from another culture does not get my culture, whatever I do doesn't specifically offend them personally, which leaves me the space to actually express myself. When if someone actually knew my culture, they might take it personally. So yeah, I just found it more freeing. And so you you prefer like the Canadian side more um, where there's like, you know, more um, space to express yourself openly and, uh, you know, and um, have more insight, I would say. Do you, feel, do you feel that Canada would enable you to have more insight? You don't only see uh, a lot of stereotypes because the problem is in, in most cultures, there are a lot of stereotypes, you know, and because you don't get to interact really with people from these different cultures. So if you're told that people from culture A are like smart people, um, you tend to believe it. You never saw somebody from culture A, but here in Canada, you see many people. So do you, do you see this like as an eye opener for you? Uh, yeah, if you like one more specific example, um, when I first did the transitioning to English, um, here I got like the full support. No one actually saw it as like, I'm going more on the like non-wow side of like education. But like back home, not specifically my family, but like everyone else was like, you're ruining your future. Like, what is that? So it's kind of, yeah, I didn't fit the stereotype back in the home. So it kind of really, yeah, like limited me. And uh, how about you, Karine? Like, again, um, you know, interacting with people from all walks of life versus just having a limited spectrum or like a sort of a, a monotone society. Uh, I think it's good to interact with people from different cultures. Uh, you get to see different point of views. And again, you get to see the reality of things, not just listen to stereotypes. But at the same time, um, what I've felt when I go often to Egypt is that when you know, when you have people like you around you who know you and who understand you, and who understand your culture, they it there tends to be more emotion when you speak to them. You know, it's kind of it's kind of like they've known you for a long time. You know what I mean? And here you don't really get that connection here. It's there's always a a separation. They won't really ever understand you. So that's the way I see it. So you feel that if, if we don't belong to the same culture, there is sort of an emotional or mental barrier. Like you can interpret what I'm you can sort of process or compute the like the verbal language but not the emotional or the or like the mental language so yeah so like canada is kind of like a melting point so if you if you were born here and you were raised in this culture and you adapt more to this culture than your other culture then you won't have that issue you can you can almost have any emotional tie with any any other fellow canadian but if if you still maintain some of the culture you were raised on from your ethnic origin, you you will definitely feel like an emotional barrier. Like people, other people from different cultures will not really understand you. And when you go back home, you you do feel more at home. Like you you feel like it's just like a big family. You know what I mean? Okay, so you see again, it's an eye opener. It gives you more insight, but um it it's like it's it's more comforting it's more assuring to sit with people who fully can sort of see eye to eye with you or like who would share your cultural background uh, am i getting you right Karim? like yeah okay perfect now moving to the next point which is a very you know common issue at, at for people like you know um um, in in this you know part of your life which is um you know in um connections relationships with uh, you know with the other uh, gender or the opposite sex and um 
So of course, the the nature of relations between uh, a boy and a girl in Canada can be very different from the nature of relationships between a boy and girl in other cultures. And the limit of this relation, again, can be different. Um, another thing, again, is, um, you know, things like marriage procedures and requirements and whatnot. But let's take first thing first. Like, um, how do you see, like, the limitations of a relationship between a boy and a girl in your cultures of origin versus that in Canada? Sarah, please. Um, so if I look at it from like a Lebanese perspective, when I was back home, I guess if I thought about marriage, I just the guy I would like, like or attracted to and just directly be OK. But like here, because there is a big difference in like religions and cultures and everything, the like my emotions come in like last. Like I have to think about like, do the cultures like match? Like, would our lives be like good? Could we like clash our cultures together and so yeah there's like more to think about than just like the bare emotions of it and um again you know like maybe immigrants might be um some of them are like more conservative more some are more liberal but um by and large like we can say that there's more liberalism or like more freedom to like to the extent of a relationship between a boy and a girl um, than in maybe your cultures of origin. Um, how do you see this? Do you see that this as a pro or a con? Like, is that a positive or a negative point? Um, I, I don't really know how to answer it specifically, but I would say it's more of a con because sometimes like immig immigration could change a person's, like even if they are from like the same culture as me, we we have like different ideologies now, different beliefs. And so for me personally, I would respect someone with different beliefs and with different like ideas, but I wouldn't want a like a future with them. So it's okay. kind of a con. It limits my options and stuff there. Yeah. Absolutely. And Karim, please. Uh I would just like to ask, like, uh what did you mean by limitations? Like I just want to see the Absolutely. So again, you know, um, so must the family be involved? So like if you like a girl or like if Sarah, for example, she likes a guy, uh, must your family get involved in it or not? Uh, is there a way that you guys can move to live together or not? And, and, and so on and so forth. This is what I mean. Okay, so for the family, I do believe that if a man is serious in his relationship, he should most definitely uh, go talk to the the woman's father. That's that's what I was raised on, and that's what I think is correct, just seeing through experience. Okay. Uh, moving, moving in together. Uh, so look, Egypt is predominantly like a, a Muslim country. So for, for my personal beliefs, there are certain restrictions in what a man and woman can do before marriage so I, I i would say i would say no and you'd have to leave everything after marriage and family must definitely get involved if you want something serious okay and uh, i'm saying maybe like sarah's nodding her head like you concur you <laughs> totally like see it eye to eye as well absolutely and um, again, like the extent where family to which the family is involved, because sometimes you might see like Mr. or Miss Perfect, really, and you've really thoroughly studied that person um, on all levels, and it's like a match made in heaven. But for some odd reason, maybe like your mom and dad might, ob might object in um like maybe your cultures of origin that's a taboo like it's the end of it's the end of the line that's the end of the story and if you um ignore your parents it, it will be a shame that will haunt you to the last day of your life um here that wouldn't really count very much um in society 
it might count in like you know the small um you know community maybe but not in the in the big society um does that make a difference for you or like would you uh consider like you know uh getting um some kind of relationship with someone that your parents don't see uh as 100% fit to you sarah um so for me and my parents opinions like really matter but i also think about it logically so if they have like valid reasons why i shouldn't be with that guy then i would probably like consider it and would like would see how it worked but if the reasons were something like kind of silly or like oh. biased yeah i would probably try to work something out so like i would want my parents to be fully involved but with limitations like I would involve myself as well. Okay. And um, Karim, would it be the same as well? Like you would... Uh... Uh, yeah, most definitely. I would I would love for my, like, my parents to give me their opinion and everything. And if they don't approve of someone, it would obviously make me think twice. Because if... Uh, I look at it this way. If I'm a father and I have a daughter... I there's definitely something I would see in that man that she doesn't see, right? Okay. So I would see it the same way with my mother. She understands women and everything. So if she's seeing something that, which I don't see, because you know sometimes love can blind you. Okay. Uh, I would definitely listen to that, and my mother's approval is very important. And and for both of you, would you uh, involve your family? from the very beginning before you get hooked really in love and romance or would you wait until you really develop these feelings and uh, then it might be so hard to uh, you know like um leave um sarah um for me i would like maybe just introduce him as a person to my parents but then wouldn't let them be fully involved until it's like actually serious but okay. yeah before that it's just maybe know his name and his identity and so anything yeah. okay so they know that there is something at least but uh yeah but not go into full details uh karim would you do the same thing uh, i think what i would do is like i would, at first i would introduce her as a as a friend and later on when i'm sure of what i want i'll definitely get the parents involved and tell them like what's going on Okay, but again, not from the very, very beginning. Yeah. And um, another very big, you know, thing again is culture. So uh, what if you fall in love with someone from an entirely different culture? And, um, but you've like, you've seen that this person fully respects your, your culture, uh, fully respects the cultural differences and everything. Uh, but this person is from a different culture, different ethnic group, different race, different everything. Um, um, I might not go as far as religion because religion might be another, uh, you know, very controversial and uh, thorny issue. But I would just say from a different culture, race and ethnic group. Um, usually in um, probably your cultures of origin, this is not a very common um, you know, behavior, and it is not very much welcome. But here in Canada, you have like thousands of examples like that. Would you consider being one of these examples, Sarah? Um, I wouldn't say I, I'm fully against it. I would say like I would love if I found like a Lebanese or at least an Arab person who is close to like Lebanese culture. But if I did find like Mr. Perfect from like a really different culture, if if it could work out and if he respects my boundaries and I can respect his, I don't see a reason why it shouldn't work. Even if your parents object? Um, like that would be an option if, if his like culture affects mine. So the boundaries would be if like my parents, if I could live with him and if his, if his parents and him could live with me, like staying, like doing my cultural traditions and stuff. Um, but yeah, if my parents are fully against it and they give me reasons why it would affect my future, I would probably take it into account. But if 
you think that their their reasons are not so valid, which one will prevail? Like your parents' side or your, your like your love side? Um, it, like if their reason is not really that accurate, I would probably like stick to mine. But if it actually causes a problem between me and them, I would probably think twice. Like I wouldn't want my relationship to affect my parents' relationship. Yeah. You would consider it, but it's not uh, on the top of your priority list, right? Like yeah. if you'd better not. Um, how about you, Karim? Would you consider having a, like a serious life relationship with someone from an entirely different background? Um, I think it com completely depends on um, their mentality. We definitely have to be eye to eye on certain things. Uh, like, for example, how, how will the kids act and what would their values and their ethics be? Those those are very important to me. So I just I would want to make sure me and my partner see eye to eye on these things. So it, it very much depends how big is the difference. But if there is no big difference, really, if you come to a, like a mutual agreement between you and her that, yeah, this is the way we'll bring our kids up and whatnot. This is the way we'll have our life, and you know everything is 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 perfect. But still, your parents might object. Would you uh, insist that, no, this is the person I love and this is the person I want to continue the rest of my life with? Or would you uh, walk out on her? Uh, I would definitely try and, and, and fight for it as much as I could. Yeah. So at least you, you'd, you'd go there, you'd, you'd take the fight. Yeah. And... Um, Another thing, again, like getting married to someone. So um, usually it's um, like the profession and the family of the candidate, whoever he or she are, um, are very important. So um, he must have a specific profession and a specific um, economic standard and a specific uh, social background. And if these things don't match, no matter how good the guy is, probably the answer is no. And uh, again, marriage usually means like dowry, um, you know, like gifts, gold, diamonds, <laughs> weddings, whatnot. And uh, very lavish, extravagant, you know, exotic parties and invitations and, and, and all that stuff. Um, do you still hold tightly to all of these prerequisites? Like, you know, must your partner be able to afford all of these things, Sarah? Um, so when I look at a partner and his economic status, I don't really think about him. Oh, he should be rich and, and should be like able to give me the most lavish wedding and stuff. I just think that if we do like live together in the future, am I going to be a comfortable person if like, our children wouldn't be a burden like would they be okay um and then for the wedding part of it i really don't mind it if like my loved ones are with me there's like good music i wear a dress that's that's good for me so just how comfortable you can make me and how about his job like if his job is perceived by your culture of origin not by canada but by your culture of origin as a lesser job like, for instance, if you're married to a chef or like a plumber or an electrician, um, would you consider something like that? I, and, yeah. I'm sorry, just uh, I have to say with all the full respect to all of these great professions, of course, here in Canada, we fully respect these. But I'm just referring to how people from other cultures might perceive them. Would you consider getting married to someone with, from these professions? Uh, if his job like gives him enough money to raise a family and have a stable home, then I really don't mind what he does. Um, okay. The money is clean, and if it's good money, then I don't mind it. And if like my culture, like my family or stuff, like don't really like it, I would try to like respectfully tell them like it's not really their business, and it's like okay, you know, yeah. And Karim, would you consider it the same thing as well? Like, um, if there's a mismatch in terms of like family background or like 
economic position or like um, terms of education, for example, would you uh, carry on with someone like that in a real a romantic and then like a real official commitment? So I think it, it, it really depends because you need to you need to understand that even in places such as Egypt, different in different social classes, there is a difference in culture. Yes, we are from the same country, but we are also in different culture, and we believe in different things in what is right and what is wrong, in different traditions, and um, I think the for what she works that doesn't really matter to me uh I, like from what i was raised on it was mostly what i'm i'm supposed to work because what, what i was told is that a man in a relationship always provides okay so it would not matter it would i would mostly look at what her mother and father do and how they are and what difference we have and uh, the same question for both of you, um, but again, it's it's and it, like it's exactly the opposite because, uh, like um, you know, uh, guy versus girl, especially in you know cultures of origin, like um, is it okay for you, Sarah, to make more income than your husband, and is is it is it also okay with you, Karim, that your wife would make more income than you? starting with you sarah is it okay if if you make more income and and maybe you're more successful than your husband um i don't mind it like i would be so fine with it if he's okay with it i'm okay with it but to me the priority would be him providing at least just like the mortgage um the education part of it if he could give it i would probably help as well well yeah i wouldn't mind it but he wouldn't mind like having more income than or like having maybe um, you get like more promoted faster than him. That's not a big issue. No, it's fine. As long as he's serious and he's doing yeah. his best. Uh, how about you? Would it be okay if your wife is more successful than you, making a higher income than you? Uh, it would feel, I'm not going to lie to you, to be frankly honest, it would feel a little weird to me. But... As long as as long as the rules are understood, that I have my role and she has her role, there there would be no problem as long as that that doesn't change. And um, another thing, you know, like children. So children are usually responsibility of the mother, and you have like things like children, kitchen work, housework, and whatnot. Um. Um, in your like when you're married, Sarah, would you still think the same, or would you ask your partner to share fifty fifty? Or um, you know, again, because here in Canada, you can take a maternal leave and you can take a paternal leave as well. So for some families, the father might stay with the kids, actually, and the mother might go to work. So if somebody needs to stay with a newborn infant, they would just calculate it in a logical way. Hey, like how much money are you making? How much money am I making? At the end of the day, we want the biggest income for the house. So if you're making less, or if you can afford to stay, then you stay with the kids. And so he would stay, he would do the housework and the cooking. Um, would that be manly for you? Would that be normal for you? Would you insist on that? Would you really, would that be a prerequisite? If your future husband says, no, I'll never do this, would you say, no, I'm not getting married to you? Um, so for me, I was raised with a working mom and a working dad. So my mom still had like the time to raise me and my brother to cook and to clean. But my when she's like super busy um, or like she's sick or like really occupied, my dad does sometimes pitch in like with the help. Not like the fully cleaning, but like he would sometimes cook, care for me and my brother. So that's what I would actually root for. So I don't expect my husband to tell me, not to work because I am like working on a degree and I plan to use it but I would for sure like prioritize my role as a mother and like a housewife um, even if like the term housewife is kind of like negative 
vaccine negatively, I would prioritize it. But I would expect him to not like 50% help me, but would be like my second hand when I'm tired or in need. Okay, so like you would sort of complement what you're doing or be like, you know, play a complementary or supplementary role, but not not the major role in, in the housework. Uh, how about you, Karen? Like if, if your wife would tell you, you know what, I make more money than you, so you stay with the kids and I go home and I go to work. You raise the, 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 the newborn baby. Would you consider something like that or would you consider that unmanly? Uh, there's not a chance I would consider something like that. Only for the fact that I think children get along better with their mothers. And, you know, a wife's, a wife's nature is to want to be a good mother and to take care of children. I feel like that that's really what accomplishes a woman. You know what I mean? Taking Taking care of a child and caring for a child. They feel accomplished through that. And that, that would be just very weird to me. Like, again, I can help with things and everything, but me just staying at home and, you know, taking care of children and doing chores all the time, that's that's not a very that's not a very manly thing to do at the end of the day. Uh well, you know, like um last but not least, really, is Sarah, do you think that if you never came to Canada? Um, how different would you be today? Would you be exactly the same? Would you be an entirely different person? Or, or like, how, what is what difference did coming to Canada bring to you? Uh, like, in a nutshell, just to really summarize everything. Um, I would actually be like the complete opposite of who I am now. I and back in Lebanon, I was the person who didn't want kids, who didn't want to be like any type of housewife, or just because kids back in like Arab countries were like uh, an actual burden because everything's expensive and sometimes you can't provide medicine for your child so for me I didn't want to like bring my child into that world but here because like everything's safe and provided I wouldn't mind being a mom and also like back there I probably wouldn't be an English major I'd still be working on being a doctor even though I probably would regret it and yeah and do you think that maybe because here you don't feel that things are really compulsory, so you sort of try to uh, assess things in a more logical manner than if you're like spoon fed things and things are like imposed on you by force? Yeah. So like, obviously, I'm not attacking the Lebanese culture. I love it with all my heart. But as a woman there, like there was a kind of like role I should fill of being like having a husband soon children are mandatory so just because everyone wants me to do it I didn't want to do it but like here because I'm free I have the choice I can if kids fit my lifestyle I can have them if not I could opt out so yeah that like that freedom helped me decide yeah absolutely thank you and uh Karim like you were born here do you think if you were born in Egypt and never came here like um uh, you would be um, a very different person, or would you still be the same? Uh, I think I would be. I think I would be a little bit different, in the sense that I would be a hundred percent connected to my uh, Egyptian culture. But I think I think my personality overall would stay the same. I think I hold most values that um, I was raised on. The the only thing would be like uh, the professions like we talked about earlier. I, I, I personally don't believe that you need to be an engineer, doctor, or lawyer just to be successful. And maybe if I was born, that would have changed because society is very different and the way it works over there is very different. So that would that would have been a possibility. And just to uh, finish off here, like if it was possible to take something from Canada to Lebanon, or from Lebanon to Canada, what would that thing be in terms of culture or, or like behavior or beliefs? 
Um, so the first thing I would get from Lebanon to Canada is how connected and close the people are and like helping each other and like always being there for each other. Even if like you and your neighbor don't really know each other, you're still there for each other in a way. But what I would bring from Canada to Lebanon is um, just like being open minded about like kind of like the patriarchal standards and the limitations they place for like no reason so maybe like remove that try to evolve yeah absolutely and uh can you um what i what i would bring from egypt to canada is probably the, like a sense of a sense of brotherhood you know what i mean like you're, you 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 can like in Egypt like everyone almost everyone knows each other like in your area ev almost everyone knows each other you know about each other uh, I could ask anyone for help that that is my experience at least I know other people have different experiences but yeah that's what I would bring that experience from Egypt to Canada and from Canada to Egypt I would I would bring the sense of um how do i say this like in egypt like children children don't work in egypt you know what i mean for a for a good reason it depends on which class you are but from what i've seen around me a lot of kids don't work it's mostly just study 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 Absolutely. and i feel like they they don't take a sense of responsibility. All they know is studies. Absolutely. Here, here would be a shame. Like if you're like grown into 18 or 19 and you don't have a job, like why? Yeah. But on the other hand, it is a big shame to work. Like, you know, it's a shame on the family and uh, like means they can't afford, you know, to, um, you know, to take care of you. Yeah. So, and uh, that this is something, of course, that helps you know, children become much more mature. Um, at the end of this interview, I really have to th sincerely thank you very much, Sarah Habanjar. Thank you very much for being with us. And uh, Karim Mahmoud, thank you very much for being with us. And um, it was a real pleasure having both of you. And uh, dear viewers, if we're just to recap here, um, you know, immigration is definitely um, something that is increasing by the day, it's something that we see all over the world. And uh, when you immigrate, um, you tend to physically move, you tend to you know, cross thousands of miles across oceans to a move from your country of origin to your new adoptive country. But again, um, this might be a much easier immigration than the um, psychological, the social, the mental one. Uh, because really, uh, a lot of people do not leave their countries of origin because they um, like find the culture to be repulsive rather than maybe system or like, you know, uh, lack of, of one source. But so that's why, you know, like people, and again, you know, um, you might not appreciate your culture until you see a different one. And when, you, when you're outside, you might th see things with a much deeper and a much profound look. And uh, so we've seen two examples here today. And um, like somebody was born here, somebody who came here when she was 17, um, and uh, yes, there is definitely a mark that was left on both of them from, uh, you know, uh, immigrating to Canada or being born in Canada. Uh, probably as they grow up, things might evolve, but there is a mark. But again, the mark of origin is still there for life. And I think this is one of the greatest gifts of Canada, living in this multicultural mosaic this is the beauty of the spectrum this is the beauty of life really 
like no one, no one in life can endure a monotone, just uh, like just a single tone. Nobody would like that. Nobody likes a monochromatic picture, just one color. If you prefer blue, but you don't like a blue tree, would you? Or a blue sun? I don't think so. So, um, like, you know, like, like the motto of, of this, this program says, like, you know, just like, a, you know, a green tree needs a blue river and a red sun to live, so do I need you and you need me. So definitely, we're, the difference is there for us to complement one another. Dear viewers, until we meet again, thank you very much for watching, and please take very good care.